Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. The suicide hotline has been around for, for decades, but how many people actually have that number memorized? It seems like a small change, dropping the National Suicide Lifeline from a normal 10-digit number to now three digits, 988. Yeah, that new number rolled out in July, and in just the first month, the call and text volume spiked to unprecedented levels. As Suicide Prevention Month wraps up, surviving family members tell our Courtney Friedman the rise in calls gives them hope. Hector Bove was smart, kind, funny, and successful. What his loved ones didn't know was that he was also hurting. In uh, July of that year, uh, I lost my brother to suicide. It was 2020 in the height of the pandemic. The worst day of our life, the worst year of our life, and, and still, you know, struggling. Christian Bove and his family have found support through the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, or AFSP, South Texas chapter. For years, the foundation has been working to make the National Suicide Lifeline a three-digit number. They're not going to remember a super long number. When they're in that crisis mode, they're not going to take the time out to go and Google that number. On July 16th, the number for the lifeline became 988, and the reason for the push quickly became clear. In just one month, the number of answered calls shot up more than 50 percent. Texts answered went up 1,000 percent. The projected volume for the next year, so from July this year to next year, it's projected to hit 7.6 million calls. Okay, it would be uh, more than double of what the, uh, the hotline saw last year. AFSP South Texas Chair Julia Hewitt says increased call volume means increased staffing and infrastructure updates. In other words, a need for more funding. A lot of that comes from donations. But it's really also kind of up to the lawmakers to determine some of the support. Uh, for example, you know, 911 is supported by a fee, right, so that it operates and it operates locally. We're advocating for the same for 988 um, at a state level. It means the world to me that this resource is available. You know, uh, hindsight's 2020. Who knows if something like this could have saved my brother's life? He hopes Hector's story will push people to have uncomfortable conversations, check on loved ones, or call or text 988 themselves. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. A fight inside a bar leads to a woman being shot and killed on the outside of that building. Now police are searching for the suspected shooter. San Antonio police say it happened about midnight at a bar in the 1500 block of South Geaver Street. That's on the east side. Officers say two groups of people got into a fight inside the bar. They were kicked out. SAPD says once outside, a man fired shots into a car with people inside killing a woman in the vehicle. Police say 27 year old Samantha Gonzalez was the victim of that shooting. The shooter drove away before they could get a description. No arrests have been made. A suspected drunk driver plowed into a well known San Antonio restaurant this morning. This happened around 2:30 a.m. in the 1400 block of Bandera Road. San Antonio police say the driver lost control of that car and crashed into the Fred's fish fry there. Nobody was hurt, but SAPD says the driver was taken into custody on suspicion of DWI. On Saturday, more details for District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo's overnight residential permit parking program made public, leading to some tense debate in a parking lot of all places. In a statement, interim president of the Tobin Hill Neighborhood Association said in part, quote, residents have experienced disturbing behavior, including fights, urination, defecation, sex acts, and shootings. We seek for the neighborhood to be safer than it is today and feel the residential parking permit is a potential solution, end quote. That program would grant street parking in designated areas only to homeowners from 10 at night to 6 in the morning, directly affecting the bars along the St. Mary Strip. It's going to be something where you risk losing, frankly, the only area of San Antonio where you have a concentration of independently owned uh, you know, venues, bars, nightclubs, things that are really, really important to the fabric of the city. And here's part of the problem. KSAT requested exact details of this parking program. We've yet to hear back from District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo or his office. Some incredible medical advancements are made right here in San Antonio, and animals from baboons to Syrian hamsters play a big part. Human trials are really good, but before the human trials, you have to make sure something's safe and effective in, human, uh, in animals uh, so that we know it's going to be safe when we put it into humans. 
Today, KSAT explains animal testing done at Texas Biomedical Research Institute. And are there alternatives? We're looking at some fascinating science being studied right now that could replace the need for animal testing in the future. Imagine a human heart created on a chip. KSAT explains is coming up at 6.30. All right, the Spurs opened up their franchise's 50th season in San Antonio. The team's annual media day marks the start of its season-long celebration to commemorate the franchise's move to the Alamo City in 1973. RJ Marquez was there and tells us what Coach Popovich and the players expect this season. Well, those were uh, great days uh, for the city. Uh, the, the place was always pretty much packed. Greg Popovich remembers what it was like when the Spurs held court at the Alamo Dome. I think it moved with, with every dribble. It was like uh, you never knew it was going to happen. And the Spurs will return to the Dome this season for the first time in 20 years, a special event to celebrate 50 years in San Antonio. I'm going to see how, how you know historic and legendary it was. I'll see how many legends played in there. So uh, I think uh, given the opportunity, you know, I, I, I can't wait. And that's just part of the celebrations this season. The franchise will have special nights to honor the five championship teams. They will honor Manu Ginobili's recent induction into the Hall of Fame on opening night. And the Spurs will also play home games in Austin and Mexico City in an effort to expand the brand. The museums, the restaurants, uh, it's a great place to spend time. So. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Being able to just expand and go to different cities and go out the country and be able to uh, play in front of you know our fans out there is going to be huge. Keldon Johnson says it's the connection to the city and fans that makes the Spurs franchise so special. Uh, since day one, I've been accepted, and I feel like um, this is my family. I feel like you know I belong here. You know the fans show up 100% of the time, and um, that's amazing. The Spurs will play the return home to the Dome game on January 13th against the defending champion Golden State Warriors, and they hope to break an all-time attendance record for a regular season NBA game. Tickets are still available at Spurs.com. Reporting from the Spurs training facility, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Well, it still feels a whole lot like summer, but a new community initiative is helping families in need get ready for the winter. This morning on the steps of San Antonio City Hall, council members and other community organizations announced the Coats for Kids drive. The goal is to get 15,000 coats for children and families below the poverty line. District 5 Councilwoman Terry Castillo says these coats will go a long way in helping children not just at home, but in the classroom as well. We know that when students have their basic needs met, they are successful. And when you have a student who's in the classroom cold and shivering, that means that they're not paying attention because they're, they're, they're trying to get warm, right? Um, so we know that when students have their basic needs met, such, such as a coat to keep warm in the classroom or outside during recess, that they're, they are going to be more successful and that they're having those basic needs met and they're not trying to worry about the, the feeling of being cold rather than paying attention to what's being discussed in the classroom. Councilwoman Castillo also says once all the coats are collected, an artist will create a portrait of the students using all of those coats. Look for more information on our website at ksat.com. All right, let's check out traffic on this Monday. Let's go to I-35 at Alamo near downtown, and you can see that both the upper and lower levels moving along just fine. Now, there are some traffic closures going on this week that you're going to need to be aware of. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos gives us a look at those closures and detours to help you plan your week ahead. The road closures, you can expect it. They're going to continue until throughout the rest of September, I should say, and into the early days of October. But let's make sure you can plan your commute ahead of time. Lots to look out for here. Loop 1604 North Central side of San Antonio. You guessed it, bridge widening work is taking place. Starts on Monday, September 26th and should wrap on Friday, September 30th. You will see that work take place from 9 in the morning, at least until 3 in the afternoon, according to TxDOT. That's when you'll also see the west to eastbound turnaround full closure there at Loop 1604 and Lock Hill Selma Road. But let's take another drive over here, this time to US 281 on the north side of San Antonio, because on Thursday, September 29th, we'll see bridge work take place at least until Friday, September 30th. But this is for those late night owls or early bird commuters. Eight in the evening to five in the morning is when you'll see that full closure of the Overlook Parkway there at the intersection. One last jump over here to I-10, the east side of San Antonio and Bear County bridge work. We talk about this all the time, but Friday, September 30th, 
25th is when you'll see a lot of that work take place, at least until Saturday, October 1st. It is overnight again, 830 in the evening to 12 in the afternoon. A full westbound mainland closure from Zill Road to FM 2538 is what you can see out there. But of course, you know where to find that information. You can grab those phones right now, open your camera app and scan that QR code by tapping the center of the screen. That will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. And there you'll also find a full list of all the closures that are current and that will take place in and around the Alamo City. Let's take a look outside with live cam. I don't want to get too excited, but the lower humidity, you know, is a bright spot. Today. I, I talked to somebody today and I said, man, this lower humidity is great. And he goes, do not let Caskey take credit for it, which <laughs> which I can successfully do because he's off today. That's right. He's not Sarah here. Spivey's here. He didn't say Sarah couldn't take credit. I'll for take it. credit. For yeah. It. Actually, we'll credit a cool front. I'm a meteorologist. I got to be technically correct, All right, there right? You go. We got a cool front earlier today. It was still a hot day, okay? We still were able to see a high temperature of 95, but that lower humidity, you can feel it. And Myra, you can get excited because mornings will be nice and cool over the coming days. Now, the aquifer is down half a foot over the past 24 hours, and we do have molds that are high today in the pollen count. Ragweed and pigweed are present in low amounts. Here's the weather headlines, things we're going to talk about tonight. Great weather for stargazing, and you may just want to because Jupiter is going to be the closest it's been in over 60 years here, and so beautiful weather for that. This week, though, we'll have cool mornings and warm afternoons, and we'll take a check of Hurricane Ian. I'll have those details coming up. All right, thank you, Sarah. Let's take a live look at a KSAT community phone bank happening right now here in the KSAT studios. We're working with the Red Cross talking about Hurricane Fiona relief. Find out how you can help right after the break. Welcome back. I'm Stefania Jimenez, and tonight on the Night Beat, we're going to discuss helping those who are dedicated to helping the community. Sometimes officers don't know where to go with our own problems because of that, because we, you know, we're problem solvers. Yeah, not something you think about all the time, but we're going to discuss the effort to provide mental health assistance to law enforcement officers when they need it most. Plus, a teenager shot inside a San Antonio convenience store and the clerk who shot him accepted a plea deal. But why the shooting is still at the center of a civil court battle more than three years later. We'll see you for these stories and a lot more tonight on the Night Beat. Thanks, Stephanie. Hurricane Fiona has devastated Puerto Rico. Now Hurricane Ian has the sights set on Florida, but there are ways that you can help. Our KSAP community partners putting on this phone bank you see here to donate to the Red Cross. That number to call 210-351. 1363. We want to get these phones ringing. And right now we're joined by Daniel Martinez, the executive director for the Greater San Antonio Red Cross chapter. Daniel, thank you for being here. Let's talk about why you're here. What will donations made today go towards? Absolutely. And thank you to KSAT for hosting us. So today we're here with our community leaders and volunteers to raise funds to help support the disaster relief efforts. Every dollar counts. We're asking whether it's a uh, $20 donation or $200 donation. Just to give a quick example of what that helps to provide, one $20 donation can provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner for an individual or a comfort kit for a family of four. A $200 donation can provide food and shelter for a family of four for a day. So everything helps and of course it grows from there. We're appreciative of any and all donations. And we're glad to see the phones are starting to pick up. Absolutely. That makes our hearts happy here. So what if people say, you know, I want to send my own supplies? What's the benefit of donating through the Red Cross? Absolutely. So we have a lot of community partners that we work with, and we have a lot of uh, opportunity to where our dollars are further reaching because of the partnerships and things that we have. And we have the experts who are the boots on the ground to help provide resources. So the cost to send items, the cost to do all of that for someone independent uh, is far greater than allowing the American Red Cross to utilize those resources for the greater good of the area. Yeah, just shipping alone is incredibly Absolutely. expensive. The number Absolutely. to call again, 351-1363. These call takers will be here until 7 o'clock tonight. The need is tremendous and there was plenty of time for you left to make a difference. Daniel, thank you to thank you, you and all the volunteers here. Don't forget to give that number a call. Thank you. Check out Sky 12 over downtown San Antonio, and I know it's not markedly cooler temperature wise, 
but man, it felt great today. It did. The lower humidity, you can't complain. And it, Steve, it will feel markedly cooler tomorrow morning, even tonight. And a big event is happening tonight, Jupiter in opposition. Yeah, that's a fancy word, meaning that Jupiter will be opposite of the sun and the closest it's been to Earth in about 60 years. So if you want to stargaze, you should be having good conditions out there tonight. Again, Jupiter is going to be the closest to Earth in 60 years. Uh, it rises at about 740 tonight on the east horizon, and that is after sunset at 725. It sets uh, early tomorrow morning at 710 on the west horizon, so no matter when you're up tonight, you'll have an opportunity to see it. And as we look at tonight's forecast, again, pretty nice. Sunset 725. We'll have breezy winds from the northeast gusting up to 20 miles per hour. Temperature tonight though will plummet pretty quickly by midnight it'll be in the low 70s and by tomorrow morning the 60s in san antonio and even the 50s in the hill country here's a look at the weather setup we do have some isolated showers and storms right along the border with some heavier storms out near corpus christi the front is currently working through the rio grande valley and behind it we've got some very dry air moving in from the north and this dry air is going to be with us all week long and now while we're dealing with dry uh, weather here and cooler mornings. It's a different story for those near Cuba and across parts of Florida. Here's a look at Hurricane Ian, currently a category two hurricane with wind sustained of 100 miles per hour and gusts up to 120. Ian is strengthening rapidly in the warm waters of the uh, Caribbean Sea, about to enter into the eastern Gulf here. As you take a look at Ian's track, it's expected to strengthen into a category four hurricane by tomorrow afternoon in the eastern Gulf of Mexico and potentially impacting areas near Tampa by early Thursday morning and then into northern Florida by Friday. At hurricane watches and tropical storm watches in effect for a good portion of South Florida and they're expecting to see 15 inches of rain in some spots with widespread 6 to 10 inches of rain possible. While they deal with torrential rains and difficulties from Hurricane Ian, absolutely no chance for rain in the forecast for us. Unfortunately, in San Antonio, we could use some rain, but at the cost of the chance for rain, we really are going to have very pleasant mornings here in San Antonio. When you look at dew point change just within the past 24 hours, down some 15 to 20 degrees. You step outside, it's hot, but you can feel the lower humidity. And really where you'll feel the effect from the cool front comes in the mornings. This is a look at low temperatures over the next five days. Generally, we're going to see morning lows near 60 degrees. Really pleasant for the early morning risers. Your kiddos may even need a light jacket on their way to the bus stop early in the mornings. They'll need to take it off, though, because it is going to get hot in the afternoon. But mornings are going to be pretty pleasant. Here's a look at tomorrow morning. Sunrise 725. This is a look at sunrise temperatures. 62 in Givaldi, 66 in Del Rio, 60 in Gonzales, even in the 50s in the Hill Country. As we look at a neighborhood view around San Antonio, it'll be 55 in Bulverde, 55 in Bernie, 55 in Bandera, and it'll be in the low 60s around San Antonio, 62 in Floresville tomorrow morning. But in the afternoon, Afternoon, quickly warming right around 90 for the high temperature of those in the hill country may skate just below 90 degrees. So for your Tuesday forecast, perhaps a light jacket in the morning, quickly warming up though 85 by noon 91 for the afternoon high northeast winds tomorrow gusting occasionally at 20 miles per hour. Pretty similar forecast from day to day again, very little chance for rain, but at least those mornings will feel nice with a cup of coffee on the porch. Okay, 59 somewhere in the yeah, day. Yes. What is that? Nice. Thank you, Sarah. All right, Greg, this is a guy that was clearly the Spurs leader last year. Without question, all-star player as well, triple doubles. And in this particular case, we were asking Pop today about starting basically life without DeJounte this season. When we come back, you'll hear from Greg Popovich, the Spurs head coach, starting his 27th season. And the Roadrunners open their Conference USA play on Friday. Coming up.
Cougars have built their 2022 training camp today with BD Day at their facility on the northwest side of town with the longest tenured player on the team, Jakob Pertl, for just seven years. The Spurs will be in rebuilding season led by Keldon Johnson when he recovers from his dislocated shoulder. That means you will see a lot of brand new faces in preseason, including number one draft pick Jeremy Sohan at number nine overall. It's after the Spurs traded their star point guard, DeJounte Murray, to Atlanta Hawks this offseason that included three first round draft picks in return. Greg Popovich was asked today about starting his 27th season as head coach without DJ. Players come and go as far as what they did on the court, but you know, when you develop a relationship with somebody, uh, it can be DeJounte Murray or it could be Malik Rose or it could be Matt Bonner or you know, whoever. Uh, those are the things you remember about people. So, uh, you know, he and his daughter. Uh, watching him grow as a, as a father and watching the things he would do uh, in that regard are much more in, f in the front of my mind than uh, the triple doubles that he got or anything like that. The Spurs' first preseason game isn't that far off. They face the Rockets in Houston this coming Sunday. After going 2-2 two and two to start their season, the UGSA Roadrunners kick off Conference USA played this week when they traveled to Middle Tennessee, the same Middle Tennessee that just upset Miami 45-31 last Saturday. Even with that win, after they were 25.5-point underdogs, the Roadrunners are still 5-point favorites on Friday. It's after their big 52-24 route of Texas Southern in the Alamo Dome this past Saturday. That's where quarterback Frank Harris and wide receiver DeCorian Clark set new school records. Harris with 392 yards passing, four TDs in the air, and another one on the ground, while Clark set a new single game receiving record with 217 yards. Head coach Jeff Trailer knows it all starts with keeping Harris upright. If we can protect him, you know, he's really good. We, we've, we've, we've got to get that fixed, man. And I'm, I'm really concerned about it because it's, it's, you know, we got it cleaned up last week and this week it showed up again. It looked very much like uh, the Houston game. You know, if we can protect him, we're hard to stop. Uh, we've got to be able to run the ball so we can get those guys out of those stances that are just teeing off on my tackles. And uh, we need to get some guys healthy. All right, kickoff on Friday at Middle Tennessee is set for 6.30 p.m. The Texas Longhorns took a step backwards when they lost to Texas Tech at overtime on Saturday, 37-34. The two teams were tied at 34, all forcing overtime when B. John Robinson fumbled the ball on the first play of overtime, setting up the Red Raiders' game-winning field goal by Trey Wolf in the first Big 12 game of the season. Since it was an upset, fans in Lubbock rushed the field, and now there is video that has gone viral that's showing a fan shoving Ovi Ogufu. I think the fan went and knocked our player down. Um, obviously, those are those are tough situations. I love the pageantry of college football. Um, when fans rush the field, it's dangerous uh, for us as coaches on both sides. It's dangerous for the players. Uh, it's an unfortunate situation. I give Ovi a lot of credit. I thought he showed great poise and composure. Uh, that could have turned into an ugly situation. I thought he handled himself well. Um, but no, I have not reached out to Tech. Our administration may have. Texas Tech University says it is investigating to find out who that fan is and take the appropriate action. I can remember following a Texas A&M Texas game when there was a big upset involved. Fans rushing the field. Very scary. You're trapped. There's no way to go. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's it's it's a pandemonium chaos. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Greg. Still to come here at six, KSAT explains animal research happening here in San Antonio and potential alternatives in the future. Next. San Antonio is home to the largest captive baboon colony in the United States. It's on the northwest side near Highway 151 and Loop 410 on the campus of Texas Biomedical Research Institute. The animals there play a huge role in research done on therapies and medications for humans. But science is also looking at ways to develop potentially life-saving treatments without testing them on animals first. KSAT explains the animal research done at Texas Biomed and what alternatives are being looked at. 
The Southwest National Primate Research Center is part of the Texas Biomed Campus. More than 2,500 primates are housed at the center. Most are baboons. The Baboon Corral is a six-acre open enclosure with 12-foot steel walls. There's indoor shelter, too. There are also chimpanzees and several monkey species, plus Syrian hamsters, guinea pigs, and mice. I specialize in marmoset biology. First and foremost, everyone that works with animals, the priority is animal health and well-being. We have people that specialize on making sure their nutrition is correct and varied. They, they don't just get the same thing every day. They get a variety of veggies and fruits and things just like people do. Behavioral specialists make sure the primates are socializing. Enrichment teams focus on making sure the animals don't get bored. They have access to things like puzzles, music, even TV. But of course, they're not here for play. We can't just replicate things on a computer or a dish. We need to understand how all of the systems interact with each other. And that's where animals come in is their systems are very similar to ours. And if we can figure it out in them, then it'll help us figure it out in us. Human trials are really good, but before the human trials, you have to make sure something's safe and effective in, human, uh, in animals. Uh, so that we know it's going to be safe when we put it into humans. The most recent worldwide example of that, COVID-19. When the pandemic hit, Texas Biomed shifted everything to focus on discovering how COVID affects animals in order to understand how it impacts us, primates most closely mirrored humans. What we discovered is when you infect them, uh, they develop fever, uh, some weight loss, um, and um, pneumonia. Uh, usually within just a few days of the virus, and then they recover. So it's actually a model of mild to moderate, not severe COVID-19. We know that there's a huge amount of inflammation during this infection that is almost as bad as the infection. So that we learned from animal models as well. Then Pfizer called. The company needed to study its COVID-19 vaccine in animals before human clinical trials could begin. We have a comparator group, the control group, that gets a shot with no vaccine, a group that gets the vaccine, we infect them and we're able to see whether the vaccine protects. So historically, animals have contributed to, to almost all of, actually to all of the vaccine developments. So from polio and smallpox, um, all the way up to the most current with COVID. Animal contributions aren't limited to vaccines. They've played a role in countless medical breakthroughs. The primates have contributed to how we understand what happens when, when infants are born prematurely. So NICU development, the use of surfactant, which saved my daughter, um, the use of ventilation systems, which also saved my daughter, NICU. Those didn't exist and they wouldn't exist without animal research. And in the case of Ebola, um, we were able to, through our research, in the animals, by the way, um, um, make progress on therapies and vaccines in the Institute. Another reason that animals are good test subjects, they live in a controlled environment. Researchers know their habits, how they sleep, what they eat. They don't sneak off to eat French fries like some humans. But for all the good animal research has done, it is not without scrutiny. I don't want to even say what the critics say we're doing because it's so awful and, and um, you know, we don't do those things. You have heard the claims that animals are treated inhumanely in testing facilities or that the idea of testing anything on a living being that cannot consent to that testing is unethical or immoral. There are concerns that have been voiced right here in San Antonio. Listen, as last year, the city council considered giving Texas Biomed public funding. The city of San Antonio should not be subsidizing the kind of cruelty inherent in animal testing. In a not so distant future, we will all look back in horror over what we've done to other beings with the capacity to feel pain, love their families, desire freedom, and know what is happening to them is not right. So what's the answer? How do researchers continue to innovate and create safe and effective medical treatments without testing them on animals first? A solution may already be in the works. They are uh, really working a lot on uh, engineering these uh, in vitro models of human tissues and organs, basically uh, how to recapitulate uh, the structures and functions of human tissues and organs outside the human body. Dr. Shrek Zhang works in bioengineering. He sees both sides 
sides. The incredible medical advancements made possible by animal modeling, but also the ethical dilemmas associated with the practice. It's part of the reason why he is working on alternatives in the field of bioprinting. Remember when Dr. Ross said this? We can't just replicate things on a computer or a dish. At least not yet. And that's where bioprinting comes in. Think of it as an extension of 3D printing. But instead of creating something 3D using a material like plastic, bioprinting uses biomaterial. And that could include human cells. And what's printed? Organs or parts of organs. And there's another potential alternative as well, creating human tissues on a chip. That is to begin to recapitulate uh, lungs, uh, you know, liver, spleens by adult stem cells um, and add some other cells in a matrix and develop some models that could eventually allow us to move to human trials without animals. People have been working extensively on these uh, so-called organ chip devices. Basically, uh, uh, these are little kind of uh, microflake chip devices uh, that are allowing uh, a lot of the uh, dynamic microenvironments to be created. Dynamic in the sense that they work. For example, parts of lungs or blood vessels recreated on a chip can expand and contract. Scientists can see how organs and tissues interact, giving researchers a way outside the human body or that of animals to discover how diseases and treatments affect the inside of a body. The reason that why we're doing this uh, in vitro kind of modeling is to really uh, try to, of course, at some point, uh, eliminate some of the animal studies in certain uh, uh, kind of areas and also reduce the animal use uh, for some other areas. But these technologies are still very much under research themselves. Dr. Zhang says that printing something as complex as a fully functioning kidney or a heart, for example, hasn't been done yet but the potential is there. I think it's really about the technology that we have right now, right? So I think the technology that we have right now, uh, I'd say animals are probably essential for uh, some of these developments, such as a vaccine that we have been uh, working on in the past uh, uh, year or two. There's future science coming down the pipe. It takes time, science takes time. And you can find all of our KSAT Explained stories by scanning this QR code here or go to ksat.com slash explains. Look for these stories Mondays at 630. We'll be right back. All right, the need is evident. All you have to do is look at the video that's been coming out of Puerto Rico after Hurricane Fiona to see that the need is great. The flooding, people flooded out of their homes, no electricity, no drinkable water. Jeremy Roberts joins me now with the Greater San Antonio Red Cross. Talk about some of the things that go to some of these disaster areas through the Red Cross that the donations will be used for that people might not think about. So typically people see food, water and blankets, but besides that, we also offer mental health help, um, financial help, and a lot of other services to really get people back on their feet. Because when you think about it, you've been displaced, your home has been destroyed, you don't have electricity or water, and everything is gone. I'm guessing a lot of people are just in shock Yes, that this has actually happened. So we're there to help them understand what's happening and what we can do to help them get through the next couple days and couple weeks and even in the next month. Give, talk about people who maybe aren't, uh, they wanna make sure that their money's going sure. to the people that are on the ground there in Puerto Rico in this case. So when you think about it, over 90% of our funds that you give go directly towards that area and that 10% goes towards the administrative fees to send our staff down there and make sure that they have the supplies and the housing they need to support them. The rest of it goes towards everything else. Yeah, Jeremy, I wanna thank you. I wanna thank your volunteers who are here manning the phones as we speak right now. They're gonna be here until seven o'clock tonight. This is the number to call or you can use that QR code that's on your screen right now, 210-351-1363. Will be manned until seven o'clock. There is still time to make a much needed donation. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Steve. Let's take a look outside with live cam right now. Sarah, you said I could get excited, so yeah. I'm gonna get excited <laughs> about the temperatures in the forecast this week. Absolutely. The weather is gonna benefit early risers this week. The closer you can get up to sunrise, 
the better. Temperatures will be near 60 degrees. Let's take a look outside right now. It's still 93 though, it's still warm, but the key number there, dew points 48 falling. Temperatures are gonna fall too tonight. It'll be in the 70s and pleasant with low humidity. All right, we're doing something new here. Fido's forecast. This is Dex, he's awesome. Picture of Dex sent it through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. Scan that QR code right there, post a picture of your pup. They may just make it to Fido's forecast. It's gonna be cool in the morning. 64 degrees and pleasant for most of the day tomorrow. A little warm in the afternoon. Got the yellow paw if you're walking your dog late in the afternoon. But coming up, I'm gonna have a neighborhood look at what the temperature is gonna to be tomorrow morning in your neighborhood. I like that. All right, if you stepped outside today and liked what you felt, but wait, there's more. There Especially is. Yeah. in the morning, Sarah. Yeah, the humidity, you could feel it being low, but it's still warm outside, right? It's still in the 90s, but by tomorrow morning, that low humidity is going to make it crisp and fall like for early risers. First, let's start off with the radar. We do have some showers out near Eagle Pass this evening. These are your typical summer showers quickly popping up, and with the loss of daytime heating here, we'll see them go down. But earlier this morning, really got some good rain for those in our western communities up near Rock Springs and Del Rio. Half an inch to an inch of rainfall there as a cool front moved through. Right now around San Antonio, you may be thinking, oh my goodness, there's some light rain around the area. Actually, those are those snout-nosed butterflies that are flying and migrating south through San Antonio, causing some issues there uh, on the roads, needing to use the windshield wiper, the windshield fluid, splat. That's a lot of butterflies migrating south. Outside, you can see the sun is starting to set. It's 90, it was 95 degrees for the high temperature today. Much warmer than average, but nothing compared to the record back in 2005. Even this morning, our low was 73, warmer than average, but that's actually the warmest morning low and the warmest afternoon high we're gonna have for the next several days. Here's a look at this uh, morning's dew points. Dew points were near 70 degrees at the absolute top of the scale. The front moved through this morning, temperatures fell into the 50s uh, dew points fell into the 50s by this afternoon and they're currently in the 40s dew points are falling it's very dry outside by tomorrow dew points are actually going to be in the 30s that's chapstick weather you need a little extra chapstick because it's going to be pretty dry tomorrow and throughout the week we're really not going to see dew points get above 50 degrees so it is going to be nice and dry outside with low humidity you're really going to feel that effect in the morning as i've been saying average low this time of year is 67 most of this week, our morning lows are going to be near 60 degrees. We could even dip into the 50s around San Antonio. By the way, this would be the coolest we've been since the end of May. So yeah, even though you may not feel the cool air in the afternoon, it's still going to be near 90 degrees. It is nice to see that welcome change in the mornings. On the satellite radar across the state of Texas, really only see some showers and storms near Corpus Christi in the valley. Otherwise, this high pressure system is settling over, making it dry for us. Meanwhile, Hurricane Ian is going to be impacting Cuba tonight and Florida for most of this week. We'll be keeping an eye on that, but really Ian is the only area where we're going to have rich tropical moisture around the nation. Otherwise, very dry outside. That dry air is going to win out and push Ian further to the east around uh, areas in Florida and even into Georgia. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for a cool morning tomorrow, 64. You may even need a light jacket or a hoodie early in the morning hours and then by about noon we'll be already in the mid 80s so it is going to be pretty warm already by noon in the afternoon 91 for the high temperature and those winds are going to be breezy east northeast at about 10 miles per hour gusting up to 20. so tomorrow morning around sunrise temperature is generally in the 60s 66 in del rio 60 in gonzalez 60 in new Braunfels, 64 in pleasanton even 53 in kerrville and 55 in bernie bandera in Bulverde, 60 in New Braunfels, 59 in Seguin, and right around the San Antonio area into points south near Floridsville and Pleasanton. The low 60s are a safe bet. But again, it's going to be warm still tomorrow. High temperature of 91 degrees. That is, uh, again, the mornings are going to be cooler than average for us, uh, but unfortunately, no real chance for rain. That's the cost of that drier air making it feel nice in the morning skies. Yeah, we're baby stepping our way into fall. That's a good way <laughs> yeah. to think about it. I hope. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. In case you missed it, coming up next.
It is Monday, September 26th. First, we begin with late breaking news from the city's northwest side where cleanup is now underway after a fire at an apartment complex. Yeah, this is happening in the 11,600 block of Hebner Road. It's near Vance Jackson. We know at least 20 fire units were on the scene at one time. While we don't know the cause of this fire or the full extent of the damage yet, we are being told that no one was hurt. San Antonio police say a woman is dead after a shooting in the parking lot of a bar on the east side. It happened just after midnight on South Geevers, not far from I-10. Police say an argument happened inside the bar just before the woman and two others left, and that's when police say someone fired shots and a bullet hit her in the head through the back window of a vehicle. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say right now they don't have a description of the suspect. Four people now recovering after falling into a sinkhole in Guatemala, and there's more than one of those sinkholes. Officials believe that these sinkholes were caused by recent heavy rains in the area. Volunteer fire crews say one sinkhole measured nearly 100 feet wide and almost 50 feet deep. Amazon getting a big jump on the holiday shopping season. The company is rolling out what it's calling its Prime Early Access Sale, which will be similar to its annual Prime Day sale. Amazon says it'll offer deals on hundreds of thousands of items to Prime members. The sale is set for October 11th and 12th for shoppers in 15 countries around the world. Other retailers also getting a jump start on the holidays. Walmart announced last week that it's going to start its holiday sales as early as next month. And Target said its deal days will be held October 6th through the 8th. Well, while it may not be true pumpkin spice latte weather over the next several <laughs> days, at least in the mornings, we'll have that fall feeling. Temperatures tomorrow, 64. High temperatures generally close to 90 degrees over the coming days, but take a look at that near 60 just about every morning, even potentially dropping down to the 50s Friday morning, Saturday morning. We haven't been below 66 degrees since the end of May. And I think we could get there as early as tomorrow morning as well. Yeah. Wow. ESL fan or not, that's some good stuff. Thank you, Sarah. And thanks for watching the News at 6. We'll see you after the Cowboys game.